So this issue has been troubled me for a few days um, prior to this week. I was so desperate, so I was searching on the internet, but nothing worked. Um, it keep crashing. My Mac will keep crashing because I've installed a SSD into my MacBook over the MacBook. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through everything um, people said that worked and what's not working for me, and as well as how I eventually fix this. Okay, so let's get started. Um, if you don't want to watch a video, there is a text version of it uh, in my blog below. I'll leave the link down there. And it has everything, links, um, instruction whatsoever. This is what the page is. So, um, okay. Uh, the problem is because um, when you look at it, into it, and there are random freezes and crashes, and when you look at the report, you can find your the crash report. So remember, there is a pop up when after you crash, and then you log in. There is a report to Apple. The kind of dialog pop up. When you hit report, you can find your um, uh, the model of your SSD or and the firmware of it. So um, you don't need to um, do that. I'll show you how to do how to find this first. Okay, so you can go to use disk utility. So let's just use this search bar and then search for disk utility. And in here you will see your main drive. So I have a one TB Kingston SA two thousand whatsoever. So what you need to do first, the first solution is by updating your firmware. So first you have to find out what your firmware is. That's why I lead you here. And let's go to this and try to search it. And it will take me to Kingston support because I have a Kingston A2000 NVM drive. And then uh, you don't need to go to Kingston, of course, because you have your own brand of SSD. But I just show you the overall procedures because uh, you might face the same issue. So let's go to firmware update. Okay, so I was searching for the solution. So people are suggesting updating your firmware because it's the cap capability issue. But um, when I go to here, the SSD firmware update, blah, 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 and it's Windows only. So I am not surprised. I was not surprised because uh, the SSD is not made for MacBook anyway because you use the adapter and then we plug in this new SSD. And so what you can do is I have a more detailed uh, solution on this web page here. Okay, so um, there are two ways. You can still use this if there is only a Windows only installer by install a Windows to your SSD, to your MacBook. And then you open the Windows up and install the driver update. It is approachable for most people, but you have to get the Windows disk, Windows, make the Windows installer and then install it, open it, download that, update that, and restart in Mac OS, maybe use um, internet recovery. That's very time consuming. So there is an, another way is make a live bootable Linux. It might sound scary to you because it contains the word Linux, but it's not. So um, there is a link here and it will take you to Ubuntu. It's a lot of people use Ubuntu, even just everyday Joe. So um, you don't have to use it. The great thing is you don't need to wipe your disk. You just make a bootable operating system. So Windows is an operating system, Mac is an operating system, Linux is an operating system, and you just install this installer to an empty USB following this guide here. And it will probably take you from download to finish about 
two hours, within two hours, if you have a fast network, and you just boot it up, uh, following all this instruction here. Um, on MacBook, you might have to press the power button and then hit option, hold it, and it will show up a password key for you to end the password, and then you can choose to run with um, it, the installer. So it will boot up. It will ask you if you want to install it, but you don't need to install it. You just run live version, try it. There is an option like try it. So the operating system will be running from the USB. So um, when you get inside, there is a um, uh, instruction here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there's an instruction here that shows you how to step by step using command line. You don't have to be afraid, you just follow the exact same thing they do, then it's okay. So what you are seeing here is the specific instruction for my motto, but it applies for everyone because um, you just need to change up the device and the uh, firmware driver. So the only thing difference is the device location and the driver difference. There is also a detailed instruction in this GitHub page that you can go to. So yeah, if you have any question, you can just ask me down in the comment section below or on the website uh, about this particular part. So it is about finding first, finding your own disk model and version, and then just search it on the internet and see what do you got. So if you're going for the Linux route, you can, if you're lucky, there is a Linux installer, then you can just install it straight away, download and install it. If not, you need to use this command line to download the bin file. So, what is a bin file? Bin file is a binary file, which is a uh, uh, geek stuff <laughs> that, that you cannot just click and install. You have to install it through the command line, but just follow the direction here and then it's good. So, the question is how do you find a bin file? Well, that's tricky because um, you need to really search for it. So, for example, I know I'm using A2000, and then I'll just search for driver download, and um, this is no because I know Kingston doesn't offer it. So, blah blah blah. Maybe I'll search bin directly mm, no this part takes a lot of t a bit more time really you just need to go through different forum finding people if they oh there we go so I have this github and this shows the firmware driver number version version number <laughs> sorry and yeah, this is where I found my bin file for my um, SSD driver. So this is one way to do it. I know it sounds complicated, um, but yeah, updating SSD firmware is not easy because the original disk, the, the disk you're using is not originally supported by Apple. So that's why all the difficulties, but you can ask me. Uh, yeah, you might need to look through these things. There may be some people just put it out here with an Oak Google Drive or maybe a link to a Russian site. I don't know. So, yeah. So, okay. That's another thing. So, you can use make a Linux installer and then put it up. Try Ubuntu but not install it and then go online search for the bin file use the command line to install it so this is it
and if you're using open core if you know what I mean open core is a way to update your old MacBook to a newer version but sometimes your configuration um, is not right so it crashes um, you can go to this uh, github page um, which is called NVMe fix I also have the link here uh, no, I don't have the link here. I'll just post it down below in the YouTube description. So this is for people who have, who has NVMe uh, Open Core installed. So um, yeah, you can see it requires Lelu, it's something like that. At least it's you continue at your own risk, but. If you are already modifying your MacBook using OpenCore, I think you know what you're doing. But just be careful with the requirements. All you need to do here is sets. It's um, from the description alone is NVMe Fix, which is um, supporting more uh, SSD that not originally supported by Apple. So what you need to do is just go to this path here. I'll show you how. So and uh, let's go to finder go go to folder you just paste it here enter and this is all the text file the extra plugin that you install for your macbook so you just go to this page go to mvme fix And then uh, let's see, no, not here. Oh, there's a release, yeah. So there's a release, and then you just download this. It, this is the latest version, and then you extract it and drag the CAX file to this extension here, and then reboot. That's it, but continue at your own risk. I'm not guaranteeing anything, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, um, that's third method. And then there is also people saying that resetting the SSD, so they basically just open it up, open the chassis up with the specific MacBook only screwdriver, and um, they unplug the SSD, clean it for a bit, and then plug it back in and voila it's working for them um, and other people I've read online are saying that when they open the chassis they find some dirt some a, a little bit jelly <laughs> on, the, on the board or stuff and they clean it and it's good to go again so that's another way to do it um, but I remember um, recording some folks that said it worked and then come back a few days later saying it's not working again so yeah but it's worth trying so let's continue on some people are suggesting buying a new SSD and then adapter because yours might not be supported um, but it's funny because we were using it good like good but yeah I, I don't suggest this route so okay so this is the cool part what fixed my issue because I tried the above solution and what I found <laughs> is that uh, and it's obviously a connection issue because some people are saying they're sitting it it worked for a day and then it doesn't work and some people are cleaning the jelly thing off and then it works again uh, so i don't have the screwdriver for me so i just hit my macbook i slap my macbook so what i do yeah <laughs> is the exact thing how i do it so i just hold it with one hand and the other hand make a fist and I turn the MacBook upside down so I, I hit it in the back evenly multiple punches <laughs> I 
And then I just turned it back on. And it hasn't been crashed for a week already. It, it's just that. So I pre-ordered that. I tried updating my firmware. I tried it using Linux. So maybe it's a software issue uh, in Mac and SSD capability issue like other people are saying online. But it's actually not. It's a hardware issue. I think because um, people were able to fix it temporarily using um, resetting just by resetting the SSD. I think it should be connection issue. So, but I don't have a screwdriver, so I'll just slap it. If there's a crump inside, it might move a little bit. If there is a connection issue, maybe it will reconnect. Or the worst case scenario, it wouldn't boot up. So I'll just buy another new MacBook. So there you go. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. I hope this. Um, I hope this helps you. If it does, if it really works for you as well as it's working for me, um, please comment below and hit a like, and so people know that this is legit. I am not crazy. So my solution was slapping your MacBook to fix third-party NVMe controller loss of blah 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 kernel panic. So good luck slapping your MacBook. And if you break it, please don't find me because I'm not responsible for your irrational acts. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.